There are things that we don't want to happen, but have to accept. And things we don't want to know, but have to learn. And people that we can't live without, but have to let go. Welcome, my name is Bonnie Marchand, and I'm honored and humbled to stand before you today to conduct our time together as we celebrate the life and mourn the death of Teresa Louise Perry, or more lovingly known as Terry. We gather today because that's what we do. 
When someone that we love dies, we just stop. And we pause so that we can carve out a space that's a sacred space to remember and to gather up all the memories of that person in a safe place so that the person we lost will be with us. And the reason that we have the ability to grieve is because we have the ability to receive and give love. When we lose a loved one, there is grief, there is sorrow, but there's also healing. So we come today, we gather as one to share in that sorrow and sadness and to support this family where we can mourn and heal together. At this time, I would like to ask Joe to please join me at the front for a candle lighting ceremony. Lighting a candle is a long-held practice in many cultural, family, and faith traditions. The light represents rebirth and renewal. There is something about that tiny point of light that offers us hope. It flickers and it exists in a world that can often seem dark. And it speaks to the deepest part of the human soul. And much like the light that emanated from our beloved Terry, this candlelight will warm your heart and give you hope. We stand today in silent vigil and support for Terry's family, her daughters, Mackenzie and Brooklyn, her siblings, Carolyn, Catherine, and spouse Malcolm, Joe, and spouse Betty, Rosemary and spouse Gary, and John and spouse Lorna, numerous nieces and nephews, extended family, and many friends. Today we're going to exhale the sighs of sadness that Terry is gone, taken by an illness that just wouldn't let her go, and share joyful whispers that she was part of each of your lives. We will cry together today. We might smile and we might even laugh. And when you leave, you will know that you were blessed to be part of this very unique life. For many, a funeral is a ritual of loss and connection, where we remember the dead and we comfort the living. But the coronavirus outbreak has altered that ritual and it's changed the way we can say goodbye. The loss remains, but the connections have all changed. We are discouraged to physically touch each other, certainly discouraged to hug, and instead, as mourners, we're only able to nod at one another with our masks on, smiling and expressing support with our eyes. But it's so important that we wear these masks to protect each of you to protect the staff here and to help stop this coronavirus from continuing to impact our lives. Let us begin today with a moment of silence to clear away the concerns of the day 
to be very present here in this sacred space, to turn off any and all electronic devices while we focus on the stories of Terry's life. If you will please just bow your heads and join me for a moment. Thank you. There's a proverb that says, say not in grief that she is no more, but in thankfulness that she was. At this time, I would please ask Dan Barsotti to join me to provide some memories within the eulogy. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here and sharing this celebration of Terry. I'm sure we all understand the difficulties and challenges as a result of COVID. So on behalf of Terry, Mackenzie, and Brooklyn, I want to extend a heartfelt hug to everyone here today. Whether near or far, virtually or in spirit, we are so thankful that you are sharing this time with us today. My name is Dan Barsotti, I'm Terry's nephew for those I haven't met yet. I was honored when Terry asked me to present her eulogy. This has been an incredibly unique experience that I'm grateful for because I had the privilege to share some very special moments with some very special people. What was profound about this process for me is the memories and experiences that were shared all had one key element missing, time. Each moment that was shared was infinitely rich in detail, colorful and vibrant, portraying someone we all loved very much. Oddly, the precise concept of time and quantifying it was not part of anyone's memory. It made me think. Terry was only 56 when she passed on July 28th, peacefully with her daughters, sisters, and family close by, surrounded by love and definitely not alone. That was tragically early. I was filled with upset and anger, fear and sadness and an emptiness for her loss of time. It echoed to me, especially as a young father of two daughters. Time was stolen from her and most of my feelings were based in the realm of it's not fair. Then I thought of Terry and how everyone appreciated her ability to listen and offer sound advice even if you didn't like it. Likely, after listening to me vent, she would offer her intimate, balanced perspective. Yes, her time here was incredibly short, but did you see how much love was shared? The family that I created, the experiences I had, the memories I made, the family and friends I kept close to me. Is it time that determines the quality of my life? Humbly, I would have to admit she was right. And I would wonder what other valuable insights she would have offered, like teaching, likely teaching me without even knowing. Watching me as I struggle with her open-mindedness, hoping that I came to the same conclusion that perhaps time is irrelevant. That is the perspective I'd like to carry today. That is how I think we can best honor her as a mother, a sister, a daughter, auntie, and best friend. Not that a relentless battle with cancer robbed her of her time, but that Terry was someone who lived every moment with passion, joy, strength and perseverance, and an unwavering commitment and devotion to her girls, Mackenzie and Brooklyn. She was born October 18, 1963, the baby of seven siblings, two brothers, Joe and John, and four sisters, Carolyn, Catherine, Rosemary, and Patricia, who sadly passed before she was born. She was clearly the daughter of her parents, John and Mary, a classic beauty, both refined and elegant, 
whose very own siblings would claim to be her mother. Terry was raised traditionally in an Italian household where food and family became a critical part of growing up. The smells and flavors of home shaping Terry into the culinary enthusiast we all knew her to be. When I think what influenced Terry most when was being the baby of the family, it's a complex position to be in. It's a combination of never being able to get a word in, combined with being told what to do after you didn't get a word in. However, it is also a very spe special place to be in the family. You are the watcher, the listener, the never-ending student. You get to learn from your siblings as they take on new challenges and responsibility. Simultaneously, you realize quickly that your siblings are carving a much easier path for you to follow, learn, and grow. That their mistakes are also stepping stones to a path less difficult. With this experience comes tremendous feelings of admiration and respect for your older siblings. Your older brothers and sisters become superheroes. People that you are desperately trying to emulate to copy in hopes that you might day one re reach their potential. And so it's incredibly important that I share with all of you how much Terry loved and respected each one of her brothers and sisters and that their sacrifices and commitments throughout her life and passing brought her tremendous strength and comfort. What I also think is important is that having a mafioso pack of siblings to guide and protect you also allows you to focus on the riches of the world. Let her brothers and sisters worry about money, work, and growing up. She focused on love, music, art, and cuisine. And by the time she was 18, Terry was living the bohemian life with, a very, with very close friends, immersed in choir, music, art, literature, and all of her favorite things. This was a part of Terry that, she, that never changed, and I respect and admire her as a fellow bohemian. She was always involved in the arts community, whether local or abroad, sharing some of her most favorite place, places like Rosebud with the girls and close friends. Her infectious energy was not only inspired, not only inspired those around her to sing, dance, and explore, she also ensured that people had just as much adventure when it came to cuisine whether introducing a traditional dish from her vintage recipe box or inviting close friends and family to enjoy their first adventure of sushi for the first time. Terry always made a connection to the heart with food. An understanding that a simple pleasure like sharing a meal can be a tremendous gift. I will forever miss sharing a meal with Terry. This rare ability to make friends and share experiences was by far not limited to her personal life. She was like gravity, and for those that she worked with, and those fortunate enough were immediately brought into her circle of friendship. Decades were spent at Alberta Justice, which she proudly advanced from reception into a prominent administrative role in finance. Ironically, her first role would be the reception area in the bunker building. And if you can picture and imagine this, it would be in the center of a beautiful bunker building with a full circular desk encompassing Terry in which she would work independently with a full 360 degree view of the Alberta Justice Department. Whether a judge, an executive, a public servant or lawyer, they all had to go through Terry. You literally have to admit she was just where she wanted to be, at the center of it all, watching and listening and definitely the best out of her role, she was likely and more importantly, the Alberta government's most terrifying security guard. The determination and commitment was recognized by all of her peers, and eventually she was hand-selected to join the finance department. There she was responsible for facilitating hundreds of millions of dollars in public spending, but it wasn't her amazing ability as an administrator. Terry's reputation was better known for her love of her family and girls, friends, music and singing, a person who was not only talented, but encouraged others to be their best version of themselves as well. To this day, decades later, she still remains incredibly close with friends that she met at Alberta Justice, a true testament to the character and person Terry was. To say music influenced Terry's life would be an understatement. She was surrounded by talented siblings who were involved in music, joined and remained in choir for most of her life. She even met her husband, Brian, in a band. I would say music has been a pillar of Terry's life. 
What I appreciated even more was the diversity of music Terry enjoyed, a full spectrum of sounds from classical and gospel to rock and blues. She didn't limit herself, a true artist and bohemian. She liked choir just as much as karaoke. And by the limit, pardon me, and by the millennium, her connection with music would eventually lead her to the love of her life, the Grapes of Wrath band member and lead guitarist Brian Ricks, which I have to be honest already sounds like a rock star name. They played cover band hits from the Doobie Brothers, the Eagles, to the Rolling Stones. With Terry on vocals, Brian on guitar, this clearly sparked a fire that would create an amazing relationship and a beautiful family. In 2006, Brian passed unexpectedly, tragically leaving Terry, who was pregnant with Brooklyn, and Mackenzie, who was no more than three years old. If you want to know what a hero is, I would say it is a person who is capable of handling the impossible. Terry is a hero in my mind, and when I think of her losing her life partner and seeing that reflection of that love in her children, I would say she conquered the impossible, the absolute impossible. She transformed a devastating situation and built a family out of sheer love, commitment, and will. A true selfless expression where from that moment on she was devoted to loving and nurturing her girls. There was no pulling force or distraction. She was mom. There is no question that when I think of sacrifice, love, courage, and commitment, Terry is very much a person that comes to my mind. Already noble and courageous, Terry still found the time to nurture and love the finer things in life. An active social life revolving around music, travel, experience, and cuisine. She introduced the girls to a life of adventure, culture, and community. Each decision Terry made was from the perspective of what would be best for Mackenzie in Brooklyn. Her girls were most important, and nothing would change that, not even cancer. Terry was initially diagnosed with breast cancer, which led to an exhausting five-year battle that spread throughout her body. Like all things, Terry beat the odds by surpassing every diagnosis related to her longevity. She was relentless with her commitment to enjoy life and her girls, family, and friends, focusing on each moment and possibility. Terry was full of hope and courage through the entire process, always comforting and thinking of others while her body began to shut down. She was always able to offer a simple gesture or a subtle expression to let you know that she was thinking of you and loved you. This, to me, is the definition of kindness and compassion. If I was to explore the definition of miracle and angel, then I would shift my, fo shift my focus to Jody, her husband Chris, and her children Rebecca and Nicholas. I looked up the definition of miracles and angels as if somehow Wikipedia could remotely define and quantify their relationship. However, I would say I came to this understanding. It is a miracle that Terry met Jody at Moms and Tots, and without question, Jody and her family are angels. There are no words and there are no actions that will ever be enough to truly thank you for your sacrifice and commitment to Terry, Mackenzie, and Brooklyn. <laughs> that every family member, every friend, every person who has ever been connected to Terry understands and owes you a debt of love and gratitude for this next chapter. Today and each day, we thank you and we love you. During Terry's final weeks, I was able to share a quiet moment with her and the girls, a memory I will always cherish. One of Terry's biggest fears, like all parents, was the feeling of having done enough. A simple question of, of, are the girls prepared? If she was beside me today, I would share this. Terry, your girls consider you to be their best friend, someone they trust and will always feel supported by your love and sound advice. They are prepared. Your girls understand and appreciate your firmness in parenting and your reasons for your choices. They are grateful and know it will help them in the future. They are prepared. Your girls understand the need for music and dance, language, arts, and beauty, that enjoying the finer things in life is important. They are prepared. Your girls understand the value of family and friends and the commitments that come along with it. 
It is a privilege. They are prepared. You girls have seen you struggle and fight cancer, and they know you deserve to stop suffering. They know you are at peace. They are prepared. And Terry, you have created two powerful, incredible, intelligent, beautiful women. They are prepared. So to my cousins, Mackenzie and Brooklyn, your mom loves you so, so very much. That feeling deep in your heart and stomach that no one will ever take from you. She truly dedicated herself to you both, and without a single regret, the most important people in her life were you both. You are special beings roaming this earth. You have learned and grown too fast for your years, and so the world may seem a little different or confusing. That doesn't mean you are alone. Do not be scared or afraid as you move forward, as you are surrounded by love and light. You are safe and protected by angels. And whether near or far, there are always going to be family and friends everywhere that adore and champion you. We will always be here to love and support you. So embrace the gifts from your mom, and don't forget to sing, dance, enjoy a meal and laugh, make someone feel better, listen, or even make a list. Your mom spent a lifetime preparing you, and believe me, you are ready. And most of all, you deserve to be happy. Family and friends, as I finish honoring Terry here today, I want to thank you for listening and sharing in the celebration of her life. She was by far a remarkable person, and her spirit and devotion to her daughters will never be forgotten. Thank you. Beautifully said. When a beautiful soul like Terry passes away, it leaves a hole in so many lives. As a daughter, a mother, a sister, and a friend, the pain is overwhelming for those who loved and were loved by her. As a daughter, she was a kind and loving, beautiful woman and a ray of hope. As a sister, she was a gift to the heart, a friend to the spirit, and a golden thread to the meaning of life to her siblings. And as a mother, she was a beacon to her children, and her love was unconditional. Your mother is always with you. She's the whisper of the leaves as you walk down the street. She's the smell of certain foods that you remember flowers you pick, the fragrance of life itself. She's the cool hand on your brow when you're not feeling well, and she's your breath in the air on a cold winter's day. She is the sound of rain that lulls you to sleep, the colors of the rainbow. She is Christmas morning. Your mother lives inside your laughter. She's the place you come from, your first home, and she's the map that you follow with every step you take. She's your first love, your first friend, and sometimes even your first enemy, but nothing on earth can separate you, not time, not space, not even death. We are the keepers of the memories a sacred trust by one who has journeyed on. I would like to share some memories with you that were provided to me. The first is from Eddie Gallio to Fiori. Hi, my name is Eddie, and I have known Terry for 33 years. 
We first met when we were in the Knights of Columbus Choir. I remember sitting alone during our break time and Terry approaching me in her sincere and friendly manner. That is when I knew this woman would be my forever friend. It would appear that Terry would have an ulterior motive, but she soon found out that I was not interested in the opposite sex at all. But that did not matter to her, and she embraced me in her world, and a beautiful journey would begin. Terry and I had similar backgrounds, both Italian and very family-oriented. She would often invite me to her parents' place, and eventually, I met all her siblings. She knew that family was important and made me feel like I belonged. We were inseparable. She would drag me to her electrolysis treatment, shoe shopping, and any other adventure she knew that I would agree to. You couldn't say no to Terry because she had so much enthusiasm and loved to have you be a part of it. We traveled together, went on camping trips, hosted and attended dinner parties. All these adventures carried a common thread in my eyes. She was always loyal, genuine, and giving. When I moved back to Ontario to be with my family, Terry and I would remain in contact, spending countless hours on the phone, sending letters and pictures of her girls. I was honored when Terry had asked me to accompany her and her girls to BC to bring Brian and her dads to their resting place. She demonstrated so much strength and grace as she did when she learned that she had cancer. You have given me so much joy, Terry. I will forever have a void of you not being in my life, but I take comfort knowing I had 33 years with you. I love you, Terry. Eddie. The next is a memory that was crafted by Jody. I've known Terry since Mackenzie was a baby, and we attended the same moms and tots group in Bruderheim. Anyone who is friends with Terry will tell you the same thing that I am about to say. The first thing I want everyone to know about her is about her loyalty and listening as a friend. She has paid such fine attention to detail over the years. She remembered what I liked and what I disliked in food in fashion, and in friendship. When we went somewhere together, she would pack snacks and lunches like nobody's business. It was tailored to the people attending with the care and attention second to none. If somebody did one of her friends wrong, Terry had their back. Not once have I heard secondhand stories of her talking about me other than something very kind. Not once has she criticized. Questioned? Yes. Challenged? Absolutely. But accepting? 100%. Terry accepted me as I am. She loved me unconditionally. She has shown me tremendous trust, and I won't let her down. Her greatest loves, Mackenzie and Brooklyn, will be her legacy. My family and I are deeply honored and humbled to be able to be a part of it. The girls are kind, smart, and considerate, which is a testament to her attention to everything she did, including raising the girls. I am so grateful for knowing Terry. She's shown us all how to face what life throws our way with courage, determination, and attention to detail. Terry, I will pay close attention to food because of you. I clearly love food but Terry showed me a whole new appreciation for it. I recently had lunch at her sister's and I can tell you that this runs in the family. I will always treasure the generosity you've demonstrated and I will strive to live by your example. Thank you from every part of my heart for being a true friend. Love, Jody. When I, spoke, when I spoke rather with Terry's family, actually her brother Joe, the other day, we talked about Terry's fierce love and loyalty to her daughters, of her determination, of her giving and generous heart. 
I learned that she was focused, intentional, and passionate about everything that she did and everyone that she loved. She had a way of listening so intently that you felt truly heard. She loved her daughters and would have done anything for them. They were her world, both in this one and in the next. Maya Angelou was quoted once as saying, I've heard that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. A person's life leaves behind so many moments, both large and small, with more pictures than can be seen in our time together today. But the family has gathered some of those images in a slideshow that best tells the story of Terry's life. And they wanted to share some of those glimpses with all of you into her life's journey. So as we dim the lights, please watch and enjoy Terry's life.
such grace, love, and light came from that woman. You are all so very privileged to have known her and loved her. When I watched that video, the light just shone from Terry. The quote from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory says that for some moments in life there are no words. And when Terry was diagnosed with cancer six years ago, there was a constant roller coaster of emotions, questions, good news, disappointments, hopeful news, hospital visits, tests, scans, and waiting. And as you know, she remained positive and refused to give up. Her girls were her whole life, and she tried to maintain a regular lifestyle for them, always putting their needs first. Thomas Wilder once wrote, it's hard to turn the page when you know that someone is not going to be in the next chapter, but the story must go on. And on Tuesday, July 28th, the world, as all of you knew it, became a little less bright. For on that day, our beloved Terry passed away, her body just too tired to fight the cancer any longer. Left behind are you, Terry's ambassadors and representatives of her legacy. Share your stories with Mackenzie in Brooklyn. They are now just trying to figure out how to live in a world without their mom. Terry shared her wit and wisdom with family and many friends over the years, but she saved the very best of herself for these two young ladies. She loved them both with unconditional love, and, she, and they were her life force. She fought so hard to stay with them. She didn't want to leave. But leave she did, and she had to move on to her next spiritual journey. It's so important that you know that everyone grieves differently. There isn't a right way or a wrong way to grieve. There's just your way. And it's, it might be easy to come to this time with regrets, guilt, or even anger. Because the loss of someone that you love this desperately, the loss of a mother, of a relationship, of a sibling, that quite frankly did not have a chance to completely flourish. It's devastating. And your feelings are valid. And they will come forth with great intensity. But when someone reaches out to help you, allow them to help you to heal and to carry on. Mackenzie in Brooklyn, your mom was and remains a part of each of you. Treasure her memory. Hold her close to you still. You will carry your mom with you always. May you find your own special way to honor her life, hear her voice, and claim her spirit in your hearts. As we prepare to take leave of this place, may you go forward today with a small flickering of Terry's light in your heart and in your soul. And may those memories of her begin to bring you comfort rather than pain. As we remember Terry, I had the privilege of finding a passage on her Facebook page that I wanted to share with you because the words were very meaningful to her and now they will be meaningful to each of you. The passage is entitled Crossing Over. Oh, please don't feel guilty. It was just my time to go. I see you are still feeling sad and the tears just seem to flow. We all come to earth for our lifetime and for some, it's not many years. I don't want you to keep crying. 
you are shedding so many tears. I really haven't left you. And even though it may seem so, I have just gone to my heavenly home. And I'm closer to you than you'll ever know. Just believe that when you say my name, I'm standing next to you. I know you long to see me, but there's nothing I can do. But I'll still send you messages, and I hope you understand that when your time comes to cross over, I'll be there to take your hand. As we close our sacred time together, always remember that you were witness to a very special life. A woman who made a difference in her world and yours. And I ask a favor of each and every one of you sitting here. Please, remember this family. Remember Brooklyn and Mackenzie during the holidays, during special occasions in the upcoming weeks, months, and years. Those are going to be really tough times for them, and they will need your support. I can feel the love in the room, and I know that they have it. This concludes our service for the day. Please stand, and the ushers will escort you out of the chapel. I would like the immediate family to please remain. And for those of you who are exiting, please continue to the outside before you say your condolences to the family so that we may respect the COVID restrictions. Go in peace and take care of each other. In Terry's memory, it was my honor to be here for this beautiful, beautiful woman. Get up, Billy. Huh? Get up. Who are you? Gotta get going. Going? Where? Never mind where. Important thing is you can't stay here. Julie? Julie! She can't hear you. Who decided that? You did. When you killed yourself. I see. So it's all over. It isn't as simple as that. As long as there is one person who remembers you, it isn't over. 
What are you gonna do to me? I'm not gonna do anything. I just came to fetch you. Take you up to the judge. Judge? Am I going before the Lord God himself? What have you ever done that you should go before him? Oh, that's it, huh? Yeah, they're just like Jigga said. There ain't no Supreme Court for us little people. Just police magistrates. I tell you, if they treat me up there like they did down here on Earth, I'm gonna do something about it. I'm dead now. I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm gonna stand up for my rights. You understand me? I'm gonna go straight to the top!